Twins left. Rutgers looking to add to their 17-3 lead. A stretch play. It's Aaron Young. Young to the outside. Got to the five. Near the corner. He gets in for the Rutgers touchdown. The Scarlet Knights cash in off the Indiana miscue. And Aaron Young for Rutgers with his third rushing touchdown of the season. What's up, Rutgers Nation? This is Aaron Young, and you're watching the Rutgers Football Story. They fake the jet sweep. There it is. Rose. Wide open touchdown. Aaron Young, beautiful call by Sean Gleason. And terrific execution by the Scarlet Knights. I'm your host this week, and we got a lot of great stuff to show you. You're here from our parents. Hi, have a great game. Love you. you got, we're going to talk about our culture. <laughs> and even here from Coach Yano. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. All right, thanks, guys. Yes, sir. Let's go. A lot of enthusiasm. Yes, sir. A lot of energy. Let's go. So we got to live. Challenge is there for coaches and players, all of us together. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. Can't wait to be a part of it. Top always. First, I'm going to give a I'm going to give a shout out to the fans of Rutgers Nation. Um, there's nothing better than the Scarlet Walk. Uh, it's an amazing feeling, and you can't you can't beat having all the fans be out there to support you. We just want to thank you. A gorgeous day on the banks of the old Raritan. Go Rutgers! banks of the Raritan, the gears of progress turn. Powered by a willingness to stand for what's right, by gaining ground in the race of our lifetime, and by ensuring every step we take includes our responsibility to the future. Wherever the human race moves forward, you can be sure there's someone there, pushing, learning, persevering, because progress isn't just made, it's earned. What's up, Rutgers Nation? This is Aaron Young, and you're watching the Rutgers Football Story. Young up the middle, churning the legs to the goal line. It's it. It's a Rutgers touchdown for Aaron Young. I chose Rutgers personally because it's close to home. It's, a, it's really a family feeling, and it's close-knit. I felt at home and welcome. So also on top of that, my brother Avery Young goes here. He's a cornerback. And Young got him for the sack back at the 22. Felt right to come here and play for Rutgers University. You heard a little bit from me, and now you're hearing from the parents, including my mom. Shout out to my mom, I love you. 
I'm very thankful for you. Just, just on what it's like to drop your kids off at school. Well, this is one of the biggest decisions any family is going to make is where to leave their son who plays sports. I was emotional, of course, because I, it is my baby. I am dropping him off 13 hours away. We are 2,500 miles away. We are a long ways away down in Florida, so we have to trust that they're going to take care of our kids. Really hard to, like, take them. Um, and we didn't even come with Noah, and last year was a COVID year, so we're seeing his apartment for the first time this season. It's just like a vibe you get when you're talking to somebody that you know they're in a good place. And I felt that from the beginning both times. You know what? Meeting Coach Yano was definitely an experience. I actually cried in his office. I just, it felt so right. I got so emotional when Coach Yano was talking to Giovanni. And, it, and he could tell you, I just sat there and cried. It was more of tears of happiness and joy because I knew he was in the right place at the right time. Our sons played together at Bucknell, so we knew him as a parent before we knew him as a coach, and we felt 100% comfortable bringing him here. You wanna know what's funny? I've probably talked to Coach Shiano more than any other coach because he originally called my husband and said, who's gonna be the most important person in Noah's decision? And he's like, you've gotta to get to, the, her, to Noah's mom. He knows what he's doing. He knows football, but he was also all about the whole Boy, right? He didn't just want to be dealing with football players. He wants to be a leader. He wants to train them how to be good citizens, good raising a good man. So he's joining us in that journey. He's like the second father on campus to the kids, and Giovanni loves him, and he was a great fit for us as parents, as letting our son, you know, be part of the Rutgers family. We we appreciate Coach Yano for everything he's doing for us. He was he was genuine. He was genuine when he talked, everything he said, I, I felt that it was real. Probably spent two hours talking to me one day in the beginning, which I thought was amazing that a coach would take the time to do that. And so I've just always felt really good about someone who cared that much about my son to make sure we felt good about it. I was very confident. I went here, Greg was here when I was here. A lot of the alumni that I still see walking up and talking to, they were all here. So I I had no, no, no sort of a, uh, worry about what was going to happen with my children. I knew what was going to happen with my children because my wife and I already lived it. It's nice to know that there are people that you feel good about who are that important in your son's life. We've got the greatest coach, Coach Shiano. That's right. And uh, you know we love his D-line coach who has really made us feel at home. He loves his coaching staff. He loves Coach Shiano and his, his position coach. Really, really interactive, really, really willing to take time and spend the time. He has parent Zoom calls for all of us just to make sure all the parents feel like they know what's going on. He's really great that way. I fully felt like the coaches here and the coaching staff were going to take care of our kids. I'm a medical professional, so I felt like the medical staff was A1 here if something were to happen to them. Even through the pandemic, you know, the communication was very high, you know, and I, I think that Johnny's got a home here. He's very comfortable, he loves his teammates, and that's the most important thing to me. As the weeks have went on, I can tell when he calls, he's so comfortable and he's actually genuinely happy with his decision. So that makes me feel so much better. And let me tell you something, when I dropped Bo off for the first time, of course, it was just a bunch of tears and they're like, oh, but I know that I was close, so it wasn't too bad, right? Same thing for Max, when I dropped him off, there was tears and there was crying, but let me tell you something, now, right now, <laughs> I say, when are you going back to school? <laughs> and I, I know they're gonna be taken care of, I know that this is family, this is Rucker, so I don't have a care in the world. They've grown, they're men now. When they came, they were boys. Now they are grown men who call and check on their mother. And uh, it's an amazing feeling. It's a touchdown, Aaron Young. I'm Aaron Young, and this is the Rutgers Football Story. Family means everything to me. Just having my brother here 
just as an example of, of that. And it's how I was raised and that means everything to us. We're gonna give you a little sneak peek of what our culture is like and what, it's, what it means to be a Rutgers football player. Family Trust Chop, FTC. That's how you day, baby. Chop day. Oh man, Family Trust Chop. That's the um, that's the culture, man. Forget about me, I love you. I sacrifice for you. Culture, you know, FTC, Family Trust Chop. That's a big tool for us in this culture. Family Trust Chop is the first thing. The ability to love each other, you know, be able to trust each other. We're not gonna lie to each other. We're gonna do what we have to do at the time we have to do it. Just uh, learning new culture that we have here and adapting to it, uh, I feel like I fit in perfectly. Family Trust Chop. That's how you're gonna beat us. Yes, sir! Hey, we okay. One, two, three. So if you break it down, it's forget about me, I love you. So if you spell out family, you got that. Forget about me, I love you. It's a big thing here, a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice to, to win a game. You have to put somebody else before yourself. You might not want to do everything that you're doing, and it's bigger than you. Everything is bigger than you. That's why we say we sacrifice, love is sacrifice, because you're doing something that may not be the best for you, but it's the best for your brother. And You know, it's hard to sacrifice. You know, some things you don't want to do in life, and you just got to, you know, just think about the others around you. Everybody around his family, coaches, players, staff, faculty, whoever works here is just all about family, and we just sacrifice for each other. You'll do anything for somebody who you love. If somebody haven't done something they're not supposed to be doing, You'll be the guy to step in and be like, come on, it's not what you're supposed to do. If something going on outside, and we was at um, a, a party or something, you gotta sacrifice for your brothers, you know, get them out of situations and stuff like that. This is just like family and we build bonds with each other. And this is it's really more than football. And then you got trust, family trust, that's the second part. Trust is 100% honesty, that's a big thing we hear. 100% honesty, do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, no lying about commission, no omission. You can't live life or play on a team with somebody without having trust in them, because you're always going to be thinking about if they're doing their job instead of just doing yours. When I play on the field, you want to be able to trust the other 10 guys that you're playing with. You want to trust that he's going to do his job so you can do yours without, without any concerns, and that's, I feel like that's the most important part about football. We all got a goal to achieve. So we gotta keep moving forward and we all gotta have trust with each other so we could get to that goal. The thing with trust, you it's hard to get it. It's hard to get it, but it's very easy to lose it. You can lose it in a heartbeat. Hey, today you gotta go harder than them, longer than them. Do you understand? What's up? Chop, 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 you got me. And then you got chop. That's mental and physical toughness. Like, so if you imagine a tree, you have to have the mental and physical toughness to focus on that same spot on the tree over and over again. Because if you don't, if you get off, if you get off task, It'll take you an hour and a million hours to cut down the tree. I own the prize. I own that spot on the tree. You really have to focus and lock in. You know, you got to be tough mentally and physically. You need to be focused on every play. And you may hurt, you may ache. So you got to be mentally and physically tough to be able to do your job. The tree is just the goal that we have. So what we're fixed on at the moment is doing some things in the 10, winning some more games. So that's the tree. Do you have the fighting you just keep on going, even when stuff get hard, just to keep on fighting? It's, it's, it, CHOP is a universal term. It works for things on the field, off the field, in your personal relationship, school, and, you know, I just, on those nights where I felt like, you know, quitting, going to bed, I just, I stayed up, I put my head down, I continued to work, I continued to work to get my school work done. We all have moments in our life where we just, we all trying to achieve something, and we got distractions all over the places. You got people calling you, but you really gotta just eliminate all the all the stuff from surrounding you and just focus on the moment focus what you're trying to achieve it, it's the chops not for the week i can't lie that's just how you live and how you live as a man how you live on and off the field and i think as our teammates and as our players um, we abide by that i think the greater outcomes we have on the field and off the field so it's just a common thing keeps everybody in line and it, i think it keeps everybody going in the right direction family trust chop that's our culture that's what i learned from coach Yano. I, I will always stick with it for the rest of my life. We just got to work together. We just got to chop our job. Everybody do their job, and it'll all come together in the end. Oh, chop, that's what we do. Best parts about game day is being able to run out the tunnel. It's really fun, it's energetic, everybody gets excited and it's loud. So this is one of my favorite parts about game day. You walk down this tunnel, 
and we get to hear the crowd bumping. We're here with our teammates. We, just, we get fired up with the music going. We got a little fog back there. And it's, it's a really exciting time before we go out and take the field. I think the biggest thing is we try not to shy away from like what went wrong. Obviously you need to move on because there's another game and another one game season. But we're gonna look at what happened, we're gonna fix it, we're gonna be open and honest, we're pushing on us to it keeps it real and tell us what went wrong. We internalize that, we take the coaching and we get better. You know, just whatever coach has a plan and you know, we wanna get on our chop and go to practice next to tomorrow and just get back to work. The biggest thing is just continue to chop and just continue to learn from your mistakes. We can't dwell on the past and everything. So of course we're gonna go in there tomorrow and learn from our mistakes and correct things on film to prepare for Maryland. But we just can't dwell on it. We just have to learn from it and continue to move forward. We still hold the pen. There's a lot left to play for. We got a one game season coming up again. So we're gonna look at the tape, figure out what went wrong, learn from it, and get ready for the next one. For me, especially just being a leader and just keep leading the guys in each and every way we get. And, you know, when we go out to practice tomorrow, just, just lead them. Uh, we got something to handle and we got to get the job done. Well, they're learning how to work. Um, and I don't just mean work hard, because I thought they worked hard from the day I got here. But I think they're learning how to direct that work, all that energy where it needs to be directed. And I think they're starting to build an accountability amongst the players. It's not just coach to player, but player to player. And that needs to continue to grow, but that's the seeds of building a program when there's player to player accountability to do the hard, tough stuff day in and day out. There's a lot of things to be excited about. Don't want to get too out far in front of ourselves again. We got a big, te a big game and a good team in Maryland to play this week. So. Um, but it would mean a lot, I'm sure, to the Rutgers community and this program as well. Um, the biggest thing is like, we really want to focus on the bowl game. Next week, we know we got Maryland, another good team coming here. We have to learn from our mistakes. Playoff football. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's like the old high school playoffs. You win and you keep playing. So we're going to take that high school playoff mindset into this week, especially knowing that there's a lot on the line and a lot to play for. Well, they know what the ramifications are on the result of this game, but if that's your focus, you're probably not going to get your desired result. I mean, the focus has to be on our preparation for Maryland, uh, as it is every week for the 11 previous games, and really lock in. And now with what we call bombs, more bombs going off on the sides, that focus is even more important. The ability to stay focused on the task at hand and not get distracted. Uh, it's a good football team. Um, they're very explosive on offense. Defensively, they're big, they're long, they can run, they play a lot of man coverage. And they're good at it, so I mean, it's uh, it's quite a challenge. This is Aaron Young from Coastal PA. Shout out to the Ville, Ville mentality, and uh, you're watching the Rutgers football story. Up next, you guys are gonna learn a little bit more about Pop. He's a fellow teammate of mine, running back. He does things the right way, and he's one of my favorites on the team. To the goal line, touchdown! So take a look. Open field and a touchdown for the Scarlet Knights as they go 75 yards on the opening drive and they start in style. Isaiah Pacheco here, Violin, New Jersey, number one, running back. And Pacheco taking the direct snap that time and pushing. I'm gonna tell y'all how I got the nickname Pop. So when I was like 10 years old, it's, I was like an end defense end or something like that. Came off the ball, ear hold the uh, quarterback, <laughs> and all you heard was like, pop. And then like everybody started calling me pop, my father and them. Um, Breaks the tackle to the 20, to the 10, adios compadres! I started football when I was eight years old, just walking around the town, seeing a lot of kids at the parks. That's where it all started at, Third Street, Violent Midget Football Field. For the pylon, did he get it? He did! So what I love about football, football kind of distances myself from the streets and stuff like that. Like the community, I was growing up, it was bad and everything. So football was my way out. And that was what keep me like straight. Sidesteps the defender and rolls in for the touchdown. Touchdown Rutgers. And Pacheco in a foot race. Pacheco inside the 10. It's really like, this is really what you want to see if you're Sean Gleason starting with this Rutgers team. 
When I'm done here at Rutgers, I want to be remembered as a leader, as a great family man, and the man that's next to me, as my brothers, my teammates, and you know, just having that bond throughout the rest of my life. Up the middle, to the goal line, touchdown! They're, they're dominating. Breaks a tackle and scores the Rutgers touchdown. Second touchdown of the day for Isaiah Pacheco. Up next, we're going to get busy with Bo. Uh, he's a guy that everyone loves on the team. Everyone enjoys to be around. He's really energetic. He loves to dance. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about Bo. I'm Bo Melton. I'm from South Jersey. I um, play wide receiver here. Um, my parents went here, so that was a big fit for me. Hi, Bo. Hi, Max. Good luck today. And so when I was recruiting the process, I always kept that in the back of my mind. You know, I always wanted to be like my dad, so and he played here. My brother's Malachi Melton. He plays DB here, they call him Max. And we like to go at each other, you know? And just to make each other better, you know? Hey! <laughs> Man, Rutgers is a big pick for me. I just loved the school and staying in Jersey. Caught! Boom! Melton went way up high into the air and pulls it Lopping it downfield, he's got Melton at the 35 and say goodbye! I just love the competitiveness of the game, you know? Being with the guys on the team, having teammates good guys and competing against other people. Now he throws it up downfield for Melton, who makes the catch, made a great adjustment. Coach Yano's a great man. He always has your back with everything. The tools he gives us as a team is our culture, you know, family trust chop. I'll say the biggest thing I learned from him is being a consistent, hard worker. That's just how you live, how you live as a man, how you live on and off the field. Bo Melton on the business end of the most- Fans are like one of the best things here. I just can't wait to see the fans here and just, I love you guys. He cuts back to the 40, Melton's gonna score! Ruckers Nation, I love y'all, and go Ruckers, go Scarlet Knights. And five, see you later! Thank you for letting me be your host. Go Knights, go are you I can't wait to get off the bus and see all you guys on Saturday. We're really excited for senior day. Oh, man. We need you to be loud, be proud, and cheer us on.